we will now look at recognising signs. As we have seen from our studies this far, abuse is both varied and complex. The abusive treatment of a vulnerable adult may be very obvious such as being beaten or physically hurt. It is more likely, however, that abusive treatment will be subtle or even invisible to detect. Abuse is a negative, harmful and illegal act. Due to its very nature, it is inflicted in a sinister but clever way by the abuser and is usually not obvious to others. Abuse can be difficult to recognise. Aging vulnerable adults are prone to lots of accidental injuries such as falls, which can make it more difficult to decide whether injuries are a result of an accident or because of abuse. Injuries resulting from accidents are often close to the bony prominences of the body, like shins, foreheads, knees and elbows. Injuries which may be non-accidental often include injuries that occur frequently, such as lots of bruising or cuts, some of which may look like finger marks and may be in unusual locations on the body. With physical abuse, there are visible signs, such as cuts and bruises, that alert you to the fact that abuse is happening. There are, however, many other signs of abuse that are much less obvious. Known statistics are In 2014, 63% of reported cases of safeguarding vulnerable adults were aged 65 years or over. 60% of reported cases were related to women. 51% of people in reported cases had a physical disability, frailty or sensory impairment. 42% of allegations took place in the home and 36% within a care home environment. The source of risk was most commonly someone known to the alleged victim. It is essential that you are able to recognise some of the less obvious signs of abuse, as described above, so that abuse can be quickly identified and corrective action taken to minimise the likelihood of it recurring. One of the easier ways to start to develop skills in recognising the signs of the abusive treatment of vulnerable adults is to look at real-life examples. Let us take a close look at the following case study. In 2006, a gentleman named Stephen Hoskin, living in Cornwall, became a victim of abuse that he was subjected to for over a year. It was a heinous crime of torture and abuse, which eventually saw the conviction of two members of the gang for his murder, and one member was convicted of manslaughter. Stephen Hoskin had severe learning disabilities, which resulted in him behaving in a childlike behaviour. On moving Stephen into his own bedsit, due to a failure in relationship with his own mother, adult social care had diagnosed Stephen with having a substantial need and organised weekly visits, including contact with a GP. To the detriment of Stephen's life, a group of youths tricked Stephen into believing they were friends. Unbeknown to him, the youths took over his life, money, his home, forcing him to work for them. They treated him worse than an animal, keeping him on a lead inside his home, which was supposed to be his safe haven away from the world. Sadly, Stephen was forced to ingest excessive painkillers and alcohol before being taken to a nearby viaduct and enforced to go over the safety barrier where he fell 30 metres to his death. Ultimately, his death was investigated and the serious case review highlighted that not enough had been done to safeguard Stephen as a vulnerable adult. The investigation discovered that Stephen had been in contact with numerous agencies, i.e. health and social care, the NHS, the police in the months running up to his death. Unfortunately, Stephen himself instigated the decrease of contact weeks before his death. Despite this fact, it was found that all warning indications had been missed and not enough had been done by adult social care to prevent this unnecessary murder from taking place. As a result of such a case, vast improvements have been made over recent years between agencies in vital areas to ensure better communication, working together, sharing of information and staff training to ensure that everyone is current in their knowledge and understanding of safeguarding vulnerable adults, which strengthens their working in partnership. Data is now shared with the appropriate agencies to provide a collaborative approach. Everyone has a duty of care to others, which ensures that the well-being of vulnerable adults is paramount. 
Practitioners, medical or carers, must be aware of the types of abuse that could be taking place so that they can direct them to the most suitable service for assistance. Possible indicators can be The vulnerable adult is unusually withdrawn. Unexplained injuries, cuts and bruises frequently occurring often with unacceptable explanations. The vulnerable adult flinches, shies away from physical contact. The vulnerable adult displays marks associated with self-harming. The vulnerable adult has a learning impairment. Communication is often out of context. Long-term condition. Medical issues continue without regular, any aid. Poor hygiene, clothing. Lack of belongings. Items regularly go missing, often with no valid reasons. A residential person in a care home is medicated with non-prescribed medicines to ensure they remain quiet during the nights. When questioned, a vulnerable adult explains that someone is keeping their passport and other documents safe for them, displays lack of mental capacity and requires support to make decisions, regular misuse of drugs and substances, both prescribed and non-prescribed,